Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to Alumni Diamond. We are back here for the final game of this three-game set against the Fairfield Stags and the St. Peter's Peacocks. We are just about to get underway here with the first pitch. Colin McVeigh on the mound for the Stags. Leading off for the St. Peter's Peacocks is number five, the center fielder, Garrett Greco. And the pitch from McDay. That's a fastball and misses on the outside part of the play. That'll be ball one to the center fielder, Greco. McVeigh working from the windup, the 1 0. That is looped into left center by Greco. And that will be caught in left field by TJ Schmalsley. It's a hard out right there to start the game. You know, they saw the ball pretty well off McVeigh, but luckily right into the glove of the left fielder right there for a quick out number one. With that put out by Schmalsley, that will bring up the right fielder, number eight, Brendan Wilson. And the first pitch they have bat to Wilson. That is foul tip back behind the plate for strike one. Brendan Wilson, a part of this powerhouse top three of the St. Peter's lineup. These top three hitters have accumulated most of the hits and RBIs for this team in this three game set where they've mostly struggled to get a consistent offense going. And the second pitch they have bat. That is a ball on the inside part of the plate. Working off what Kyle just said there, besides the one, two, three hitters for St. Peter's, their lineup is batting 127 in this series. Let's see if behind the three batters for St. Peter's they can put in some work. The 1-1 one, one with one out to Wilson. That fastball is in there on the outside part of the plate for strike two. McVeigh coming into today came off one of his hottest starts, if not the hottest start of the season. He posted an eight innings, one hit, one earned, 14 strikeout outings. So. And that one, two, it's in there. Swung on and missed by Brendan Wilson. That'll be McVeigh's first strikeout of the game. Working off what Kyle just said. Working off what Kyle just said. In McVeigh's last start, he did have 14 strikeouts in eight innings of work. Only putting up, only letting up one run. With that strikeout from McVeigh, that'll bring up the power hitting catcher, Ashby Vining. And the first pitch at bat. As a fastball in there on the inside part of the play, looked at by Vining for strike one. Vining probably had the strongest day yesterday for the Peacocks, ending the hitless streak for them in the fourth inning. He's had a strong, strong sense of just barreling the ball, so there's a reason he's in the three hole here. And the second pitch of the at bat is cut on and missed by Vining. Vining on Friday did have two home runs in the game and also had a strong outing at the plate yesterday. With the 0-2 to Vining. That's a fastball laid off high by from, from Vining. Some rain starting to fall down right here. We had a pretty brutal day yesterday in terms of battle on the elements for these infielders and these players. So we'll see if that impacts the game and their ability to grip the ball here for McVeigh. With the one two from McVeigh. That's fouled back by Vining. He stays live here. Kuzik will be getting the start behind the plate today. Hibbard will be DHing for the Fairfield Stags. Wind's blowing out towards right field right now, folks, with the rain starting to drop. With the one, two. That is in there for strike three. Down, Vining goes down looking to end the first half of the first inning here for in Fairfield. He's right back where he left off. Great start for the Stags. Will return for the bottom half of the first. Don't go anywhere.
Welcome back, folks, to Alumni Diamond. I'm Colin Lynch alongside Kyle Scannell. And now leading off for your Fairfield Stags is the third baseman, number 23, Dean Ferrara. Absolutely unreal day yesterday from Ferrara. Three for five, a double, and a homer. Let's we'll see if he keeps it up here. And the pitch from Del Colo. That's a ball high. Oh, that is in there for strike one to Ferrara. On the mound for the Peacocks is freshman number one, Drew Del Colo. With the 0-1 to Ferrara. Ferrara rips that out towards right center. Going back is Wilson. At the track, at the wall, and that ball is gone. A leadoff home run from your third baseman, Dean Ferrara, to put your stags up 1-0 here in the bottom of the first. How about that, Kyle? Can't expect anything less from him. He has that monstrous day yesterday. He does not wait very long today to get started. What a way to spark the offense. 1-0 early stags lead. That looks similar to yesterday, showing that oppo power off the bat. Ferrara loves going to right center, putting that ball the other way. That's been the name of the game this whole series. Every home run has found its way either to center field or to right field, which you wouldn't expect from a lineup filled of right-handed uh, right hitters. Sorry. Yeah, for sure, Kyle. And with that, that'll bring up your shortstop number two, Luke Nomura, who's had himself quite a series. DeColo from the stretch. And that fastball is in there, called strike one. Important note about DeColo, he has not actually had too many innings this year. He's only at 21 on the year. Most of his outings have come in relief, so this is one of the few times he gets a chance to start a game here. Peacock's trying something a little new in this last game. Yeah, for sure. And with that, the second pitch is on the outside. That is just misses the outside part of the play for ball one. The 1-1 one -one from Del Colo. Nomura lays off that ball high, putting the count at 2-1. and one. Nomura hit two solo home runs here at Cook Field on Friday. And yesterday, Nomura did go one for five, scoring a run. Looks like there's going to be a quick mound visit here for Del Colo. Looks like there seems to be an issue with his throwing hand. Looks like they brought the trainer out. Yeah, not the greatest sign. Again, something he hasn't done before. You know, starting a game, something could be up. Um, but regardless, I don't think it's going to be anything that's going to take him out of his game. I am curious to see what the Peacocks do here. As Kyle has stated, this will be his first start. I'm wondering if they do a little pitcher by committee with the opener that we usually see in the MLB in recent years. Yeah, starters have not been going as long. It's definitely been more of an analytical game, playing the matchups. Um, but of course, the three batter minimum seems to have had to work around that. And I think they're just switching it up here. I mean, the St. Peter's Peacocks come into this game 10 and 25, right? So when you're in that position, you know, you just got to try some things out until you figure out what works for you and your team. And an opener might be what solves this team's uh, issues. Weather has shown to improve here despite the rain falling in the past few minutes. Things have cleared up, looking a little bit better. It's going to be probably off and on today. Not as bad as the previous outing, but. While there's a meeting on the mound, warming up in St. Peter's bullpen is number 32, the freshman Lyndon Rayburn. We'll see if Del Colo can't continue. Rayburn will probably be coming into this game. Maybe it is more serious than we know. I didn't. We didn't see any immediate pain or reaction from Del Colo, but this might be the end of his day here, facing only one batter. And Rayburn is heading towards the mound here, folks, in the bo in the bottom of the first, after only one batter faced by Del Colo. And Del Colo will be walking off the mound here. Obviously something you hate to see. Hopefully it's nothing serious for the Peacock as he walks off. And that'll definitely switch up the game plan for the Peacocks. You know, they came in today probably expecting to try something different, and now they got to flip the script on them and bring, bring out a new pitcher, essentially, right at the start of this game. Now pitching for St. Peter, number 32, Lyndon Rayburn. 
Rayburn on the year has a 10.87 ERA uh, with a 2.20 whip. And he has seen 27 innings. So pretty similar to his predecessor. Not too many innings on the ledger. But giving his chance today here against the Stags. Rayburn's first three batters face will be a dangerous bunch with Nomura, Bergevin, and Hibbard. Those are three hitters in the MAC that are very scary. All hitting over 300. Yeah, taking a look at Rayburn's recent games, none of them have seen more than an inning or two. He started one game back on the 24th, but besides that, he has not seen much starting action. So again, this is still going to be the same kind of uh, opener tactic here, but just with a new name, new face. While Rayburn's getting warm up, let me tell you who's in the field for, your, for the St. Peter's Peacocks. From left to right, in left field is number 13, Ryan Dacey. In center field is number five, Garrett Grego. And in right is number eight, Brendan Wilson. Behind the plate for the Peacocks is Ashby Vining. Going from third to first, at third we have Logan Baker. Number three at shortstop. Number seven is Joseph Lomangino. At second base is number 19, Alex Rackus. And at first base is John Sun. John Sun with Lyndon Rayburn warming up on the mound. Speaking of these Peacocks uh, defenders, yesterday they had a rough outing with five errors, mostly coming from the infield. But regardless, that's just something you can't have in a baseball game. It created a lot of run opportunities that Fairfield took advantage of, and it led to that seven-run inning we saw yesterday. So I know that's going to be on their mind today, making sure they keep simple plays simple. Don't make anything more than it has to be. Yeah, mistakes will cost you in any baseball game. Rayburn will inherit a 2-1 and one count when he comes back here. Nomura's had a good five minutes here to just kind of sit back, relax, get a few more swings in, but certainly going to be a weird feeling having your account reset like this. You know, you got to come back to the plate. you got to, you know, try to get back to where you were. Your team just hit a leadoff home run. You know, you're in this great momentum uh, feel, and that's kind of taken away here when you take five, ten minutes off the clock. For sure. Nomura batting 308 on the year. In this series against St. Peter's, he is four for nine with two home runs and three runs scored. Yeah, I know this is a guy, Nomura is not a guy you want to let get on base on the year. Nine for 11 on his stolen base attempts. He is definitely a guy they have uh, watched for when he's on the base pass. A lot of pickoff attempts. Gets in the pitcher's head. So getting on here would be a great way to uh, get the Stags offense back in motion. It looks like we are getting back to play. Nomura stepping up to the plate. Again, count is 2-1, no outs. Stags lead 1-0, bottom of the first. Rayburn working out the stretch the 2-1. And that'll be ball three in the dirt. Hitters count here in Nomura. The 3-1, no outs to the shortstop. That is inside, and Nomura will be awarded first base with a five-pitch walk. That's exactly what you don't want to do. Now you got Nomura on the base pass. That's going to be a threat. You got a couple dangerous hitters coming up. Could be a quick few runs right here before you uh, before you blink. Let's see if the Stags get aggressive here and send Nomura. Bergman is a deadly power hitter, hitting 312 on the year. Nomura with a decent lead over at first. And as a first pitch breaking ball, it catches the inner part of the plate for strike one. Bergevin sitting on 12 home runs this year, only trailing his teammate Hibbard with 13. But it's an impressive stat that does lead the Mac for his teammate Hibbard. And that is another breaking ball, but just misses inside to Bergevin, and I'll even the count here at 1-1. Nomura taking a few extra steps at first. And the pitch. That is in there, in the dirt, but smothered by Vining. Good pick by Vining. Nomura easily could have got second on the pass ball. Rayburn working from the stretch. 2-1. That is a breaking ball that misses the inside part of the plate. And that will put the count to 3-1. and one. 
to the dangerous hitter in Bergevin. Vining couldn't quite squeeze that one. I think if Nomura had taken off right there, it would have been definitely his bag. Oh, for sure. Also important to note, Vining yesterday was at first base, so not sure how prepared he'll be today for the catching role if people start stealing on him, but we'll see if Nomura tries to take advantage. And the 3-1. That's a breaking ball that's in there for strike two. Yeah, Vining played first base yesterday. The first base in John's son did not get the start, but he is in there today here at first. Full count here to Bergevin with no out and Nomura on first. The pitch from, Ber from Rayburn is in the dirt for ball four, and that will put runners on first and second with no one out for the ever-dangerous catcher Ethan Hibbert. Yeah, Staggs with the uh, the right approach right here. You know, a brand new pitcher comes into the game. You don't need to be swinging, right? You need to see if he has control, and right now he hasn't been able to find the plate. And with that, they have runners on first and second. Nobody out for the DH today, Ethan Hibbard. Keep in mind that is back-to-back -back walks, even though Rayburn inherited a 2 and one count to Nomura. And that first pitch is a breaking ball that's fouled down the third baseline by Hibbard. Hibbard looking to jump on one early trying to score Nomura from second. Hibbard this season with a 4.07 average, 47 RBIs to his name with those 13 home runs. So this is the guy you want up right now. The 0-1 to Hibbard. Hibbard smacks that towards right center. Going back is the center fielder in Grego. And that ball bounces off the wall. Nomura rounding third, followed by Bergman rounding third. Hibbard will have a stand-up double, and there will be no throw to the plate as Nomura and Bergman score on the... No out double by Hibbard. What a piece of hitting. What a way to start the game. No outs, three nothing. The Stags are cooking right now. And the Peacocks are in trouble early. Hibbard has had himself a monster series, having multiple RBIs in each of the three games already. And now, sorry. It's going to be tough to stay composed right now if you're Rayburn. Uh, you know, you, you come into this game, you don't even expect to pitch today, and it's three nothing just like that. First pitch that bat is a breaking ball that misses high for ball one to the right fielder, Matt Bucciero. I thought that ball off Hibbard's bat had a chance to clear the wall. He gave it a good ride. Second pitch that bat is in there on the outer part of the plate for strike one. Yeah, you are definitely right with that. It's been tough to judge fly balls this season. Some that look like they're getting out stay in. Some fly down fair when you think they're going to go foul. It's been tough to judge. It's a, it's a tough series for these outfielders. The 1-1 is a breaking ball cut on and missed by Bucciero. That ball, that was a nice breaking ball in the dirt blocked by Vining. Hibbard with his lead off second. And the pitch. That is ripped into left field by Bush. And that ball is caught in left field and Hibbard tags from second and will easily get into third base. Well, the Peacocks finally get their first out, but it did not come easy. That ball was launched over to the warning track. Definitely home run territory, but just did not get enough right there. Yeah, the left fielder Ryan Dacey had his heels on the gravel warning track. I thought that ball also had a chance of clearing the fence. And that will bring up the second baseman in sack, Zach Selinger. With Hibbert on third, one out. That ball... First pitch of bat is in the dirt, blocked by Vining for ball one. Solinger at the plate rocks more of what I would call maybe like an aggressive stance. It's crowding the plate. If you look at the way he's holding that bat above his hands, leaning forward, it gives the pitcher a lot less to work with in the strike zone. Yeah, for sure. And the second pitch of bat is another breaking ball that's in the dirt, blocked by Vining. Solinger's had himself quite a year, batting 324 with an 870 OPS. 2-0 to Selinger. That is ripped over the shortstop in Lomagino, and Hibbard will easily score from third. And that is an RBI single for your second baseman, Zach Selinger. What a great piece of hitting there. Yeah, I mean, great base running as well by Hibbard. He took a look, made sure that ball was getting over the shortstop's head before he ran. And once that thing dropped, he's in. It's 4-0 Stags. What a start here from your Fairfield Stags in the bottom of the first. And that will bring up the catcher in J.P. Kuzik. Similar to yesterday, they have more uh, runs than hits. Not easy to accomplish, but with the way they've been taking pitches and getting walks, it's been easy for him. With the first pitch of that back to Kuzik is a breaking ball that catches the outside part of the play for strike one. Yeah, for sure. The bats are out here for the stags in the bottom of the first. Second pitch of that bat is caught on and missed by J.P. Kuzik. Second 
Sellinger at first, held on by Sun. The pitch from Rayburn is in the dirt, blocked by Vining. Sellinger gave a quick glance at Vining. Vining almost threw back to first. Rayburn's pitch count now, finding itself into the 20s. So you know he's trying to get anything he can to get outs right now because I'm not sure who else they have warming up. And J.P. Kuzik grounds out up the middle, handled by Rackets at second to Limacino at first, and that is a double play, a 4-6-3 double play to end the inning here at Alumni Diamond. Your Fairfield Stags are up 4-0, and don't go anywhere, folks, for Colin McVeigh will be taking them out at the top of the second. The DH, number 28, Tyler Smith. Welcome back, folks, to Alumni Diamond here at Cook Field. I'm Colin Lynch alongside Kyle Scannell, and your Fairfield Stags just put up four runs in the bottom of the first. And in the top of the second, Colin McVeigh, the pitcher, will be facing the DH and number 28, Tyler Smith. With the first pitch of the at-bat. That is fouled out of play over towards the field hockey fields, and that'll put McVeigh ahead in the count 0-1. Kyle, how was that bottom of the fourth? Uh, you know, that, that, that four-run piece right there, that was great from the Stags. I mean, they got they wasted no time right to it with the bats. Love to see that from them. I said bottom of the fourth bags. I meant bottom of the first. And with the second pitch, that is a fastball that misses the outside for ball one. Pretty similar to what the Stags did yesterday. Uh, while putting up 12 runs, they mostly came from majority of two innings. So they, uh, they have a contagious offense is what I'd say. When one hitter hits, the next one, you know, better likelihood. The third, pitch, the third pitch to do that bat just misses outside, and that will be 2-1 and one to the DH, Tyler Smith. That ball is ripped to Selinger, and Selinger drop. Selinger, Selinger bats the ball down, made a jumping play. Bergman is not on first base to make for the throw over from Selinger, and that will probably be ruled a hit. That ball was batted hard. Yeah, I mean, right to him. Definitely had to jump for that one. In the glove, out the glove. Tried to catch it with the bare hand. Couldn't. But the first baseman was just not on the bag, not ready in time. And by then, the runner already had crossed. So definitely a play that could have been made, but not the end of the world here. McVeigh working out a stretch for the first time in the game. First pitch up has a, a high ball, which would put the count at 1-0. and oh. Smith gets his lead off first. The 1-0 for McVeigh. That is ripped towards left field. And that is caught in left field. That ball was hit on a rope. That was TJ Schwalzi over there in the left with the grab. Definitely need that one. That ball was roped on a frozen line, but luckily right to him there. So one away, and that'll bring up uh, Alex Rackus for the St. Peter's Peacocks. Yeah, that ball was hit on the line, but Schmalzley only had to range over about two steps to his left to snag that, keeping Smith over at first. With 
the OL. That is a fastball cut on and missed by Rackus. McVay bringing the high heat for the first pitch. With the second pitch to Rackus. That is fouled back to, into the netting, which will put McVeigh ahead in the count 0 2. McVeigh looking for his third strikeout of the evening already here. Big swing and miss guy. Smith with a small lead from over at first. The 0-2 from McVeigh. That fastball misses high, which will be the first ball of the at-bat. He let the pitch clock wind on that one if he took note there. That went down to just five seconds. And I know most guys build a routine for when they like to step in for the batter's box, you know, get ready to hit and throw, but it seems that like McVeigh definitely takes his time with it. Yeah, he's letting the pitch clock wind down here with the 1-2. That ball hits the outside corner. That'll be a call it strike three looking by Rackus. Yep. What a pitch by McVeigh there. Backwards K, got him looking. Rackus did not seem to like the call. But regardless, two down, one on first, and McVeigh looking to get through another solid inning. Yeah, after the leadoff single, McVeigh gets two quick outs to bring up the third baseman, number three, Logan Baker. Smith, the DH, still over on first. With the OO. That ball just misses high here for first pitch ball. With the 1 0. That ball is inside for ball two. Brushed him off the plate right there. See if he tries to go back to more heat or go to that off speed because I honestly think he's having these hitters pretty off balance so far with the way he's been mixing his pitches. That is fouled back into the netting by Baker, putting the count at 2 and 1. The DH Tyler Smith's play at second, the liner knocked down by Sollinger, is ruled a hit, and he is on first base. The 2 1 from McVeigh. That is a breaking ball that just misses on the outside part of the play. McVeigh thought that was in there for strike. That'll be a hitter's count here, three and one, to the third baseman. Yeah, we'll see if Baker's swinging here, if he's gonna take a more, you know, light approach, try to get some more guys on for the guys behind him. Three one. That is cut on and missed by Baker. McVeigh brought the fastball there and Baker could not catch up. Yeah, just a bit behind that one. That might have hit the glove before he swung. That that was a nice pitch right there. It was not prepared for. Full count two out here. Runner will be going. Smith is not being held on by Bergman. Smith goes. And that's cut on and missed by Baker. That'll be a strikeout for McVeigh, tallying his fourth of the game. Don't go anywhere, folks, for your Fairfield Stags will be up to the plate shortly.
Welcome back, folks, to Alumni Diamond here at Cookfield. I'm Colin Lynch alongside Kyle Scannell. Colin McVeigh, after the leadoff single in the top of the second, shuts, puts away three in a row. And for your Fairfield Stags, number 10, the center fielder Paul Catalano is up. And with the first pitch from Rayburn is a breaking ball that misses outside for ball one. The second pitch of that bat. As a fastball hits the outside part of the plate for strike one. Rayburn working out of the windup. That's another fastball outside, but just misses. Catalano with a 212 average, looking to try to spark the offense right here, show what he can do here out of the eight hole. Ball three misses outside, barely. He's living outside right now. That's four straight pitches trying to catch that outside part of the plate. Let's see if he attacks him in here. With the 3 1. Catalano rips that foul out of play towards the field hockey fields, putting the count full here at 3 and 2. Yeah, Catalano saw that pitch middle cut. He said, I'm going for it, but just a bit behind right there. It'll make the count full. With the 3 2. So Catalano cut on and missed, and Vining will throw it around. Yep, stayed away from right there. That's a high and away uh, heater right there. Catalano cut at it and ended a little bit behind it for the first out of the inning. With the strikeout from Catalano, that will bring up the left fielder, number 22, TJ Schmalzley. With the 0-0, Schmalzley draws oh. one, but is plunked by a breaking ball. Schmalzley will be awarded first base, and that flips the lineup over to the third baseman, Dean Ferrara. Yeah, you'll definitely take that if you're Schmalzy. I'm gonna have a cold uh, stretch right here, batting 163, shows bunt right there, gets hit in the back leg, and no better guy to have up when you're on base than Dean Ferrara, who led off this game with a solo tank. Ferrara homering in back-to-back -back games. With the 0-0, and that's ripped towards right center. Wilson sizes it up and will catch that. Ferrara gave the first pitch of that bat a ride to right center, but Brendan Wilson, the right fielder, got a good beat on it and only had to range, didn't have to range too far to get that. It's a great swing for what the pitch was. That pitch was heavily inside. He kind of had to golf that swing. Probably could have waited for a better one, but when your bat is that hot, sometimes it's hard to resist swinging as fast as soon as you can. Ferrara loves taking pitches the other way, too. First pitch of that bat to Nomura is in the dirt for ball one. Nomura in his last last inning did walk. Schmalzley gets a decent lead over from first. The delivery from Rayburn. That's a breaking ball inside, and Schmalzley will take second base. Quick flashback to the first inning. It was Nomura who was up when we saw Del Colo leave the game. So this does mean Rayburn has reached his first time around the order. And Nomura was the one who saw him first. So he's ahead 2-0. Trying to get an RBI right here with Schmalzi on second base. And the pitch to Nomura is in the dirt for ball three. So we're just getting word here on the starting pitcher from St. Peter's, Del Colo. He does have a right arm injury. He's bandaged and iced up at the moment. The 3-0 to Nomura. That is inside, and that will be a four-pitch walk to bring up the three-hitter, first baseman, Matt Bergevin. Got to wonder what was up with Del Colo. I mean, I don't think he threw more than eight pitches there. Something maybe about the way he threw, maybe like an off-speed pitch, a breaking pitch. But regardless, hate to see that uh, for the Peacocks. That's the only thing I could think. It, it would be a breaking pitch because it was he did leave the game in a 2-1 count to Nomura in the top of the first, in the bottom of the first. Excuse me. Ooh. First pitch at bat is a breaking ball that almost plunks Bergman in the head, but Bergman gets out of the way here. Yeah, Bergeron would rather swing it. He's had a hot bat. He sees two guys on right here and a chance to put some more runs on the board. Schmalzi on second. Nomura at first. The one up. That is a fastball in there on the inner part of the play for strike one. Bergevin also walked in the bottom of the first inning. Two outs here with two on. That is a called ball low to Bergevin. 
Yeah, the Stags have the right approach right now with uh, Rayburn, you know, just taking as many pitches as they can. He's at 36 pitches. They're just going to work him out. Rayburn out of the stretch. Bergevin lays off the low fastball, and that'll be ball three. They tried the check swing appeal right there, but no go from the first base umpire, so it'll stay three and one. Hitters count here to the three to the three hole hitter in Bergevin. He's got two on with two out. Both speedsters on the base pass, so one in the gap could score both. That is ripped towards left field. And that ball drops. Schmalzley will easily score from second. No more rounding third. He'll be held up by the third base coach. And Bergevin gets a two-out RBI double, sending Nomura to third, and Schmalzley will score from second. Way to wait for your pitch right there. I mean, he works the count to three and one. He knows Rayburn has been a bit all over the place today in that strike zone, but he gets what he wants inside, able to turn on it over that left fielder's head. Cash is in another run, second and third now. Two down for Ethan Hibbard. Yeah, what a great piece of hitting there by Bergman. That ball was on the inside part of the play, and he took it way out to left. That bounced up near the warning track. Now up is Ethan Hibbard. First pitch almost clips him inside, but that was a ball one. Yeah, Rayburn's been living inside so far. We've seen these inside heaters and those low uh, off speeds, but hasn't gotten much bite out of these stags. Yeah, he's definitely been working inside to righties and outside to lefties for sure. And that breaking ball plunks Hibbard in the Evo shield on the left elbow. And that will put the bases loaded for your right fielder, Matt Bouchiero. Hibbard almost looking disappointed, wanted to get a chance to swing there, but he'll take first base for his teammate. It's loaded up, and the Stags could blow this one open right here with a big swing. You could tell Hibbard just wants to hit the baseball. He was he had a look of disappointment on look of disappointment on his face when that ball hit him. And after the hit batter there, it's going to be another mound visit for uh, Rayburn, pitcher coach coming out and catcher, just trying to get him under control right here. You know, assess the situation. If you can get this out right here, this game is definitely still in reach. It's just five runs to the bottom of the second, but you need this out. Bouchiera has had himself quite a series here at the Alumni Diamond, going three for seven with two home runs and four RBIs in the past two games. Yeah, he's got a great chance right here to add to it. Rayburn will stay out there as the coach and catcher head back. Again, we have two down, bases loaded, bottom of the second, Stags lead 5-0. Bouchiera in his first at bat flew out to left field. Two outs here at Alumni Diamond with the bases loaded in the right fielder, Bouchiero up. The 0-0 is inside for ball one. Nomura on third, Bergman at second, Hibbert at first. No one's being held on here. The 1-0. That is fouled into Rafferty Stadium to even the count here at 1-1. One the rain has returned here at the Alumni Diamond. The umbrellas are out, but these stags have not stopped hitting. With thunder comes rain, and the rain is the bats here at Fairfield. And that ball is ripped in the right center by Bouchiero. And that ball drops. It gets past Wilson and Wright. Nomura easily scores. Bergman easily scores. Hibbert is held up at third, and Bouchiero gets a two-out RBI double, advancing Hibbert to second, scoring Nomura and Bergman. These stags love the opposite field hits. It just feels like every time we see those righties coming up, they're hitting it to that right center gap. It falls right in front of Wilson there. Doe for it, couldn't get it. Ball skips by him, and two more runs score. It's seven nothing here in just the second inning. With that, RBI, two RBI double, that'll bring up the second baseman, Zach Sollinger. Sollinger looks at the first pitch fastball is in there for strike one can't exactly identify who, but the uh, St. Peter's bullpen is definitely uh, in motion right now with some throwers, so not sure how long we'll see Rayburn out. Second pitch fastball hits the inside part of the plate for strike two, putting the second baseman in Selinger down 0-2 in the count. Two out here with two on, Hibbert at third, Bouchiera at second. The 0-2. That is ripped into center field by Selinger. Grego sizes that up in center and that will be out three. But nevertheless, the Stags tally three here in the bottom of the second. Don't go anywhere for Colin McVeigh will be on the mound shortly in the top of the third.
Leading off the top of the third inning is the first base. Welcome back, one, folks, to Alumni Diamond Eye Cook Field here where the rain is finally starting to slow up. I'm Colin Lynch alongside Kyle Scannell. And with the top of the third, it will bring up the first baseman and John Sun. McVeigh has had himself a strong two innings. Let's see if he can continue here. First pitch to the at-bat is a heater swung on and missed by the first baseman, John Sun. Second pitch to the at-bat from McVeigh. Another fastball that is looked at by Sun, but it's called strike two. Yeah, McVeigh knows what works for him, and it's that blistering fastball he has just been putting right by these peacocks. He has made a bunch of hit hitters look silly here with his heater. And that is strike three, swung on and missed by the first base to Sun. And what a heat back to back to back heaters from McVeigh to, to Sun to put him down. And that would be one away for the shortstop at Joseph Lomagino. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. Oh, for sure. Three straight times right there. That'll be his fifth strikeout of the day for McVeigh. McVeigh working to the nine hitter in Lomagino. First pitch to that bat is a breaking ball in there, looked at by the shortstop for strike one. The 0 1 to Lomagino. Just misses the outside part of the play for ball one. McVeigh's really feeling himself there out on the mound. Stags rocking a bit of a shift right now, second baseman pushed way behind that second base bag. The 1-1 one, one to Lomangino's outside for ball two. McVeigh working from the windup. The 2-1. Fastball misses low. They'll put Lomangino in a hitter's count here at 3-1 with one out. Stags up 7 nothing early here in the top of the third. With the 3-1. That's a fastball hit out to right field and Bouchier. And Bouchier does not really have to move at all for this ball. And he'll easily put that away for out number two. That'll turn the order around now for the Peacocks. That'll bring up the leadoff hitter, Garrett Grego. The center fielder number five, Garrett Grego. McVeigh has put away his last five hitters. Let's see if he can make it six here in the leadoff hitter, Garrett Grego. Yeah, he's only sitting at 35 pitches on the evening, so he could definitely uh, counter his previous start with that eight innings. He's on pace for it. First pitch at bat is fouled out of play into the field hockey fields. It's always good to see McVeigh get ahead early in counts. With the 0-1 to Grego. That is lined right back up the middle. McVeigh had to duck and get out of the way out from that one. Catalano will field that into center and throw it in. And that is a two-out single from the leadoff center fielder, Garrett Grego. That is the second hit for these Peacocks. Last hit was the one that bounced off the second baseman's glove. But that ball was just smacked right up the middle. No one was there. See if the Peacocks can do anything with that or if McVeigh will shut him down. With that single, I'll bring up the right fielder, Brendan Wilson, who has seen a lot of action out here today early in right field. Brennan Wilson's first at bat in the first thing he did go up. He was the first batter to go down on strikes to McVeigh. Lomangino with a small lead off from first. The 0-0 is cut on and missed. And that'll put McVeigh ahead 0-1. Swinging for the trees right there. And they know if they can get a hold of that fastball, they'll hit it hard and they'll hit it far. Yeah, for sure. Wilson did homer in the first game of the series here at Alumni Diamond. And that is a nice breaking ball that that loops in there for strike two. What a good pitch sequence there. Start him off with the heater and then go to the breaking ball inside. With the 0-2 to Wilson. Breaking ball just misses outside, and that'll be the first ball of the at-bat. Yeah. 
And Wilson goes down on strike swing, and that'll be McVay's sixth strikeout here in three innings. Don't go anywhere, folks, for St. Peter's, Peter's strand one on first, and your Fairfield stacks will be up to the plate shortly. Welcome back, folks, to Alumni Diamond here at Cook Park. I'm Colin Lynch alongside Kyle Scannell. And for the St. Peter's Peacocks, there is a pitching change, and that brings in the pitcher, number 23, David Delgadillo. Kyle, is there anything to know about David Delgadillo? Yeah, so David, the 5'10 sophomore at Bakersfield, California, he is also one of these guys that rocks a lot of relief pitch innings that they brought in for today. 15.43 ERA, so struggling a bit, but getting the chance now to show what he can do. First pitch is a breaking ball inside to the catcher and J.P. Kuzik. Delgadillo working from the stretch. He follows the breaking ball with another one, but that one ends up in the dirt, putting J.P. Kuzik ahead in the count 2-0. Stags up seven here in the bottom of the third. We'll have Kuzik, Catalano, and Schmalsley up this inning. Third pitch at bat is a fastball and misses high. Putting Kuzik up 3-0. Kuzik yesterday came in as a pinch hitter and was able to make an impact uh, with a couple runs himself, but getting the nod for the start today behind the dish. And that fastball clips the top part of the zone for strike one here to Kuzik. And the pitch from Delgadillo. That is ball four to Kuzik. Kuzik will be awarded first base, and that will bring up the center fielder and Paul Catalano. Fairfield's getting a good amount of walks today. It's, you know, maybe not the most exciting play in baseball, but they add up. It's the reason that the Stags have seven runs but five hits, right? They're taking pitches, they're making them work, and then they wait for the right chance, and they've been capitalizing. Yeah, like Kyle said, the Fairfield Stags have four walks on the day. Catalano shows bunt, pulls back, and that hits the outside part of the plate for strike one. Catalano looking to improve from the last day at bat where he went down swinging. Second pitch at bat is cut on and missed by Catalano. Delgadillo brought the heat, high heat here, and Catalano could not catch up, putting the count here at 0 and 2. Kuzik gets his lead over at first, and the delivery. That is another high fastball, but laid off by Catalano, putting the count at 1 and 2. Delgadillo gets the sign and the pitch. That is mm. cut on and missed by Catalano. Delgadillo brought the breaking ball, made Catalano look a little silly there with that swing. Yeah, the pitcher's been working away to Catalano, the left-handed hitter. These right-handed pitchers are just keeping it high and away, and he's been he's been chasing. With the strikeout from Catalano, that'll bring up the left fielder, number 22, TJ Schmalsley. Schmalsley last time up was plunked, if we remember, by that off-speed there. Yep. First pitch at bat is a breaking ball cut on and missed by Schmalsley. And the ball is thrown over by Delgadillo, and that is not handled over at first by Sun. Kuzik will easily stroll into second base. That ball was thrown in the dirt to John Sun, and he could not handle it from Delgadillo, and Kuzik will easily just stroll into second base. 
put a man in scoring position for the nine hitter in Schmalzley. Yeah, like you just said, now you got a man in scoring position. He wasn't really a threat to steal a base. They throw over maybe just to get in his head, but because of the error that they're going to charge to the pitcher for that, you got to run around second with one down. You don't really want a man in scoring position, especially with Dean Farrar coming up to bat next. That fastball misses outside for ball one, evening the count. Schmalzley's one for six in this series. And that is a breaking ball fouled back at, fouled back into the netting. Let's see if Schmalzley can break out of a little slump here. Yeah, I mean, there's only a handful of stags that have been struggling this series. I mean, as a unit today, they're batting 455. So they've definitely been able to pick each other up, which gives these guys a nice opportunity to kind of not feel too much pressure to, uh, you know, need to hit themselves. And that breaking ball from Delgadillo does not snap. That is very high. Handled by Vining. Schmalzley easily lays off that one. That'll put the count at two and two. With Kuzik at second. One down here in the bottom of the third. Del Delgadillo looks in at the sign. Looks Kuzik back at second and the delivery. Schmalzley li rips that down the line. Handled over by Baker. And Kuzik is caught in a rundown. Over to second to Rackus. Throws to the pitcher in Delgadillo, and Delgadillo tags out Kuzik at third. What a snag by Baker at third. Diving play, caught Kuzik, st caught Kuzik, in, caught Kuzik in no man's land, threw over to Rackus at second, and had Kuzik easily in a pickle. Throws over to third, and Delgadillo places the tag on. Schmalzley will be at first base, but that is a fielder's choice. Yeah, that's, that's great baseball. I mean, that's a tough play at third. The play at first would have been close, but... He saw that runner was way off the bag on second and made the play he needed to. So there's going to be two down here, bringing up Ferrara in the top of the order with the guy on first. First pitch of Ferrara is a fastball tipped. And that clips Vining a little bit. The umpire will walk out to the mound to give Vining a little time to collect himself. So here at Alumni Diamond in the bottom of the third, we go from a man on second with one out to a man on first with two. But nevertheless, we do have leadoff hitter third baseman Dean Ferrara up to the plate who has left the park already this game. Schmalzley with the lead off from first. And Schmalzley will be going towards second. The throw from Vining is low, handled by Rackus, but Schmalzley will easily beat that ball in there. Great jump over at first by Schmalzley. Yeah, that's the right time to steal. I mean, you got a hot batter up, you got two down, you want to get back into scoring position, and he's able to do just that right there. With that pitch, it'll put the count at one and one here with two out and Schmalzley at second. And that ball is in the dirt, and Schmalzley will easily get the third base. I thought that ball might have clipped Ferrara's toe, but that was just a, ba a bad fastball bounced in the dirt. Yep, just like that, he's went from uh, corner to corner. Guy on third now, a hit will score him. Also curious that they do have a, bit, a slight shift on Ferrara. You got the second baseman playing pretty heavily to the left, and as a guy who hit both balls to right field, Oh, yep, they're going to move him. They, they are moving him, as I speak there, into more of a uh, deeper position at the second base spot, kind of on the grass. Yeah, you can see Grego, the center fielder, also shaded not a lot, but a little bit towards right center. And the, the fourth pitch at bat is a breaking ball high, and Ferrar will foul that out of play, putting the count here at 2-2. Two and two. Two two with two out. Schmalzley at third. Ferrara fouls that back to stay alive here. Just missed that run right right there. You can see some visual uh, displeasure after he missed that one. When your bat's that hot, you just you know you really want to hit everything in front of you. You wanna you wanna keep keep the barrels up. Yeah, for sure. Ferrara's been a monster all year, hitting above 340. Ferrara grounds out up the middle. Lomangino catches it on a hop. Throw, and that is a wild throw. And Dean Ferrara will end up on first base. Thought about going for two, but Ferrara will just stay on first base with that chopper up the middle that will score Schmalzley, putting the score here at 8 nothing in the bottom of the third. Yeah, here comes the error bug back for the St. Peter's Peacocks. It definitely got him yesterday with five errors 
Now, of course, that one hasn't been scored yet, but I'm only gonna I'm gonna take the assumption that that one will be scored as an error as the Stags push the lead to eight nothing. You especially don't like that one with two outs and a run scoring on that error. Should be, even though Ferrar is a speedster, that should be a routine play for a shortstop. First pitch that has inside to Nomura for ball one. Nomura in his last at bat in the second inning walked. Nomura has walked twice this game and scored both times. Let's see if he can replicate that here. With the second pitch to the at bat, that is a fastball that catches the outside part of the play for strike one. So on the official scorebook, they're just going to put that down as an RBI single. A uh, bit surprised there since that ball ended up pretty much as far away from the first baseman as it could. But And that ball is ripped by Nomura into shallow left center. For our round second, heads for third. Nomura's going for two here. And that play will be close. And he dives in there and he is safe. That ball is looped into left center. And Farrar would easily get third, but Nomura was on his horse out of the, off the plate. He was, uh, he was on his horse and dives in there for a two-out double. Wow, yeah, that is not something you're going to see from most players. That is a single for the majority of hitters, but not Nomura. He rounds first. He was thinking two all the way, and with a nice slide, he's able to get in there safely for two on, two out for Bergevin. Yeah, addressing Nomura's speed, Kyle mentioned earlier in the game, that Nomura leads the Stags with nine steals on the year. First pitch at bat is a fastball high to Bergevin. Nomura's been up to the three plate three times. He's been on three times. Second, the app, second pitch to the at bat is a breaking ball and misses outside for ball two. We are only in the third inning. This lineup has turned around just already a few times right here. The Peacocks have gone through now. The, this is their third pitcher. It's been a long three innings for the Peacocks. With the two out of Bergman. That is a breaking ball. That does not snap down. That will be a high ball three. I mean, this is a pick-your-poison scenario. Do you want to walk Bergman and then face Hibbert, or do you attack him? I mean, this is a... Tough spot and a tough po a position. And with the fourth pitch at bat, the fastball misses low for ball four, putting the ever-dangerous Hibbard up to the plate with bases loaded, two outs. Yep, we know where Hibbard's looking right now. We got bases loaded for him, but gonna be a quick break before he gets his chance here as the pitcher is gonna get a quick mound visit here. Just, again, talking things over, try to get him calmed for this at bat since they really don't want it to be worse than it already is here at 8 nothing in the third. Yeah, especially with Hibbard coming up to bat here. Maybe the best hitter in the MAC. He has done quite the damage this year. Yeah, today Hibbard has a double and a hit by pitch. So, been productive so far. The Stags as a unit, 500 today. 7 for 14 at the dish. Just unbelievable hitting. Five of those were extra base hits. Wow. Now that the meeting on the mound is adjourned, in steps the cleanup hitter, D.H. Ethan Hibbard. Let's see what Delgadillo starts him with here. And that is a breaking ball that is in there looking for strike one. Hibbard's looking for anything he can jump on here. The 0-1 from, Loman G from Delgadillo is a bouncer in the dirt for ball one. Starting to see some sun here, clouds. Uh, getting a bit uh, out of the sky. I mean, it, it, it's nice, you know. We got some nice weather coming here as this game has gone forward. Much nicer conditions for these players. The one-one to Hibbard. Oof. Breaking ball that almost hits. It has a throw over to Vining, but that is dropped over at first by Sun, and Ferrar will easily score, and Nomura will advance to third. Wow. Yeah. That that play right there by Vining. I'm not sure it was fully necessary. I mean, the moment he throws that, the guy's coming home. The throw got in the way. The runner on the slide back made contact, and you got a guy on third and first now and another run. Yeah, that was super aggressive vi from Vining, the catcher here with two outs, throwing over to first. Bergevin got back safely, but that ball was in the dirt to Sun, and he could not smother that at first. With the 2-1 to Hibbard, 
That is a high ball three that almost hits Hibbert in the helmet. Runners yep. on the corners here with two outs. 3-1 to Hibbert. Be very surprised if he attacked him here right now with the way his control has been. And the pitch. That is a breaking ball ripped foul down the third baseline. Up next for your stacks is the right fielder in Matt Bucciaro. So with this full count and two outs, we will see the runner on first takeoff. Bergevin going. And that is swung on and missed by Hibbard, ending the third inning here at Alumni Diamond. The Stags score two here, putting the score at 9 nothing. Don't go anywhere, folks, for Colin McVeigh will continue to pitch this masterpiece. Welcome back, folks, to Alumni Diamond here at Cookfield. I'm Colin Lynch alongside Kyle the Scannell. And in the bottom of the third, your Fairfield Stags did tally two runs here to put them up 9 nothing. In the top of the fourth, le leading off for the St. Peter's Peacocks is the catcher, Ashby Vining. With the first pitch of that bat from McVeigh, that is a fastball and misses outside for ball one. The 1 0 for McVeigh. That is ripped out of towards left field. And that is a no doubter off the bat of Ashby Vining going over the road behind left field. And that'll be the first run of the ball game for the Peacocks, putting the score at 9 to 1 here at Alumni Diamond. That ball off the bat was ripped. And there was no doubt about that. Schmalzi, the left fielder, couldn't do nothing about that one. Well, I mean, you know, that's a good way to start the inning if you're the Beacocks. They got quite a ways to climb, but that is a way to do it. That ball, like you said, was absolutely just torched to left field. It was over the trees. There was no doubt about that. With that swing of the bat, that will be Vining's third home run of this MAC series. And with the first piece of that bat, the DH, Tyler Smith, will ground that to Bergevin, and Bergevin will flip it over to McVeigh. What a way to bounce back off the home run, a quick one pitch out from McVeigh. Yeah, I don't think that's gonna rattle McVeigh. I mean, it shouldn't, you're up nine, uh, well, eight now, but he's been so dominant, he knows how to control himself and he knows how to bounce back. He's got six Ks on the day, so he knows what he can do. Yeah, if you're giving up a home run to anyone on St. Peter's, if it's Vining, there's nothing you can do about that one. That man is made of power. Yeah, it's the strongest hitter on the roster, no doubt. First pitch to that bat to the left field, and Ryan Dacey is outside for ball one. Second pitch to that bat is cut on and missed by Dacey, and that'll be strike one. With the 1 1. That is fouled back into the netting by Dacey putting McVeigh ahead in the count, one, two here. Let's see what McVeigh goes to here with the one, two. 
And that is a breaking ball that just misses the outside part of the play for McVeigh, putting the count even at 2-2. Two and two. Yeah, it's a close one there and a tough take for Daisy to even the count. And the delivery from McVeigh. That's a fastball that misses high for ball three, putting the count full. Try to get him swing out there at the high cheese, but uh, no, no dice. Full count here, see what he goes to. I can't help but think he goes with the heater here. And he goes off speed, and he breaks down Daisy for McVeigh's seventh strikeout of the game. What a way to bounce back after the home run to Vining. A little ground out to first the and a strikeout. And with that strikeout, it'll bring up the second baseman, Alex Rakus, who went down looking in the second inning. Yeah, great call right there on the off-speed. Hitter was most certainly off-balance right there, looking for heat, wasn't able to react in time. First pitch to the at-bat is in there for strike one. What a way to start the hitter here for McVeigh. With the 0-1 from McVeigh. McVeigh hits that in the air, handled by Ferrara. That ball, that pitch from McVeigh jammed Rakus, and Ferrara easily camps under that. And with the, the damage done of the off the bat of Vining, your stags are up 9-1. Don't go anywhere, folks, for your Fairfield stags will be up to the plate shortly. Right fielder, number 17. Welcome Bruce back, Sarah. folks, here to Alumni Diamond at Cookfield. I'm Colin Lynch alongside Kyle Scannell. Kyle Scannell. And for St. Peter's, we have a new pitcher, number six, Mason Williams. Kyle, can you tell me something about Mason Williams? Yeah, Mason Williams, uh, if you get a look at him right here, he's 6'3 on the mound. So this is a tall pitcher right here. Pitches left handed, has a 10.80 ERA. 0-3 on the season, so not the strongest start. With the second pitch to that bat to Bouchero, Bouchero loops that into right center, and that will fall in front of Greco, the center fielder. What a piece of hitting there by Bouchero. Got a little jammed on the inside, but took it towards right center, loops it over the second baseman. Greco had no play out in center. Yeah, a bit of a blue pit right there, but you'll take that as a hitter. I'm sure that's the last thing that Williams wanted to start his outing. But, uh, yeah, Williams, the freshman, so far this season has actually started a few games, but hasn't gone longer than five innings. So maybe they'll give him a chance today to kind of stick this one out as the Peacocks have uh, switched out a few pitchers, this being the fourth of the game already. Yeah, with that uh, with that single from Boucher, that'll bring up the second baseman, Zach Salinger, and he looks at the first pitch ball in the dirt. Boucher gets a decent lead over at first. Keep in mind, Mason Williams is a lefty pitcher and stares down Boucher and goes to Salinger. Second pitch to that bat is a breaking ball that misses on the inside part of the play, completing the count at 2-0. And you can't help but to love the Stags getting out early, getting getting on base with no outs here in the bottom of the fourth. And that is a fastball cut on and miss by Salinger. 
Yeah, like you were just saying, the Stags doing a great job of getting on and making every inning difficult for the Peacocks. I mean, this game here, we're in the top of the fourth, been going on for an hour. I'd say the majority of that time has been Stags at the plate. They have just made every inning last as long as they could. The 2-1 to Selinger misses outside, putting Selinger in hitter's count here at 3-1. with a delivery from Williams. Selinger rips that down the left field line, and that ball is fair. Boucher around second and heads towards third. Selinger to second. Boucher will head towards home, and Boucher will have a stand, will be standing up at home plate, and Selinger has a stand up RBI double, and hits the crane pose over at second base. What a great piece of hitting by Selinger. That ball might have been a little bit outside, but he ripped that down, pulled that down the left field line for an RBI double here with no outs. Everyone is hitting today for the Stags. That's double digit runs here in the fourth. This team's just having good times right now. Good vibes over in the dugout for sure. Yeah, with that RBI double, that'll bring up the catcher and JP Kuzik. We have no one out here with Selinger on at second being held on by Rackus. The delivery. JP Kuzik with the first pitch fouls that back into the netting. Up with the count at 0 and 1. Mason Williams on the season has 38 walks, so he's issued 38 walks along with his 38 earned runs. So control might be an issue right here for the tall left-hander. With the 0-1 to Kuzik. And as a fastball, it just misses the zone here to Kuzik, even in count at 1-1. One one. Selinger being held on by Rackus that second. Rackus backs off the delivery for Williams. And that is a nice breaking ball that falls in the zone here for strike two to Kuzik. Really nice pitch there. With the one-two to Kuzik. That is a breaking ball that bounces in the dirt, handled well by Vining behind the plate. Yeah, that breaking stuff looks to be the bread and butter of Mason Williams right here, you know. Trying to get hitters to uh, expect heat and then drop that kind of 12-6 curveball on them. The 2-2 two and two from Williams. Kuzik hits that to shortstop to Lomagino. Lomagino gobbles that up. Throws the first, but that is in the dirt and Sun cannot handle the scoop. With that, Selinger will take third base. After Lomagino easily had Kuzik at first. That was a good throw. Off the scoop from Sun, he could not handle that, and that brush towards the pitcher's mound, giving Selinger enough time to advance the third base. Yeah, that's the uh, third error of the day for these Peacocks. Just the last thing you need to see right there. I mean, that could not be more routine for the shortstop, but when you're down in a game like this and you had a day like you did yesterday for the Peacocks, it might just be a mental thing right now, or you know, something like the yips for them. Yeah, that is the second throwing error of the game for Lomangino at short. First pitch is a fastball and misses outside for ball one. Runners on the corners, no out here for the center fielder and Paul Catalano. Despite the 10 runs, Catalano 0 for 2 with two Ks here, getting a lefty-lefty matchup, trying to help contribute himself. And Catalano rips that past the second baseman in Rackus. Selinger will easily score on that play, and J.P. Kuz will stroll into second. What a piece of hitting there by Catalano. Hit that, in, hit a nice line drive ground ball in between first and second base. Rackus or Sun could not make a play on that one. That ball was roped into right field. With that base hit, uh, seven of the nine stags have recorded a base hit today. So the whole offense has just been churning runs as they have 11 here in the fourth inning. With that RBI single, that'll bring up the left fielder and TJ Smallsley. First pitch of Smallsley is a high, ball one. Yeah, Williams has definitely had a little trouble with his command, but the balls that are in the zone, the Stags are taking a hold of. Second pitch that bat is cut on and tipped by TJ Schmalsley. One one here to the left fielder in Schmalsley. And the pitch. That is a breaking ball that misses inside to Schmalzley, putting him ahead 2-1. and one. Still no outs here in the inning. Peacocks just looking for anything they can get here. It's a force at third, just whatever they can get. Yeah, like you said, no one out. And next up to the plate is Dean Ferrara, the leadoff hitter.
That 2-1 breaking ball misses high for ball three, putting Schmalzley in a great hitter's count here. Yeah, you cannot walk this batter right here. You know, you got you got the hottest bat on deck. You got to just kind of make them beat you. If you're gonna, if Schmalzley gets a hit, he gets a hit. But you got to attack him right here on three one. Schmalzley grounds that to Lomagino at short. Lomagino to Rackus that second. Rackus the first at Sun, and that is a six four three double play for St. Peter's pitcher's best friend there. And Williams definitely needed that one. Yep, that's exactly what I was just saying. That's why you attack him right there. It's the nine hole hitter. Of course, everyone's been hitting, but your best odds are going to be right there. You got to attack him on 3 1. He does just that, and he gets a double play. So maybe yeah. he can cool things down here, but won't be easy with Dean Ferrara at the plate. Yeah, Williams really needed that double play there, and that it is called a bit pitcher's best friend for that reason. And Ferrara with the first pitch to that bat sends out to center field. Greco racing back at the track at the wall. That ball is gone. A two-run home run off the bat of Ferrara here with two outs in the bottom of the fourth, and that will put the Stags ahead here. Wow, what a ball off the bat of Ferrara. Can't stop smoked. this kid right now. That's his fourth at bat of the day, second home run, third hit. Dead center moonshot. Wow, that one went towards the middle of the trees in dead center field, putting your Fairfield Stags up 13 to one here in the bottom of the fourth. Wow, what a bat on ball five for our. Just unbelievable hitting. Four in the first, three in the second, two in the third, and four again in the fourth with one out to play with. First pitch to that bat. First pitch to that bat to Nomura is cut on and missed for strike one. They've already outscored their total yesterday, which would be a hard feat to do, you'd think, with 12 runs, but this team has simply not stopped hitting. Yeah, for sure. With the second pitch to that bat, that is fouled back into the parking lot, putting Williams ahead in a pitcher's count 0-2 to the shortstop and Zach Nomura. Nomura's walked twice and got a double in the third. Third pitch that bat just misses the outside corner for the first ball. 1-2 here to Nomura with two outs. Stags have scored four here in the bottom of the fourth. And the delivery. Nomura tips that and stays alive. The 1-2 here to Nomura. Nomura fights that fastball towards the shortstop Lomagino and Lomagino throws it over to Sun at first and that will put, be three outs here for the St. Peter's Peacocks. But the Stags do tally four here in the bottom of the fourth. Don't go anywhere folks for your Fairfield Stags will be in the field shortly. Welcome back, folks, to Alumni Diamond here at Cook Park, where your Fairfield Stags are up 13 to one in the top of the fifth. Colin McVay is still on the mound, pitching a strong game, only letting up one run on three hits. And up for St. Peter's is the third baseman in in Logan Baker. With the first pitch at bat to Baker, he fouls that into Rafferty Stadium, out of play. Yes, this will be the 7, 8, 9 hitters for the Peacocks here and a team that's been predominantly helped by their 1, 2, 3. You know they're going to have to do their best here to get the top of the lineup up. 
with the second pitch at bat. That is outside for ball one. Baker is 0 for 1 on the day with a strikeout. And the pitch. Breaking ball fouled down the first baseline. Putting McVeigh in a pitcher's count here at one and two. Baker a bit behind on that one. He's got an interesting batting approach if you take a look at him. He kind of holds the bat straight behind his shoulders there and then kind of readjusts right before the pitch, kind of with like a toe tap mechanism. But, uh, you know, every hitter's got a unique stance and whatever's comfortable for them will work. So, Let's see if it's able to help him here on the one two. And the delivery from McVeigh. That is a breaking ball that is cut on, hit back into the netting. Baker stays alive here, one, two. You gotta love to see what McVeigh's been doing this whole game. Yeah, I mean, it's gonna be, it was tough to top, we thought, his last outing, but he's pretty much on pace right now, sitting at seven strikeouts um, and only sitting at 52 pitches. So, curious to see how they'll use him in a game where they're winning by this much. And Baker fouls another ball off back into the parking lot, staying alive here. Let's see what McVeigh works up, works with here at the one, two. Let's see if he mixes it up. Makes three, Baker look a little silly. Three straight fouls. I'm thinking he's trying to probably blow one by him here. Just try to surprise him. With the one, two. Fastball is tipped into the mid of Kuzik, and that'll be that'll be McVeigh's eighth strikeout of the game. And with that strikeout, that'll bring up the first baseman, John Sun. There's the heater we're just talking about, you know, three straight foul balls. He's thinking, all right, I need to just try to beat this guy right here with my best stuff. Goes to it and gets the first out of the inning with a swing and a miss. Yeah, you hit the nail on the head with that one, Kyle. With the first pitch that bat's Sun. He has a fastball that misses inside for ball one. Sun also 0 for 1 on the game with a strikeout. With the 1 0. That ball just misses low, putting Sun ahead 2 0 here. Sun rocking the, I'd say, very close stance. Keeps those hands pretty close to the chest. Oh, yeah. With the 2 0, that's fouled into St. Peter's dugout. That'll be the first strike of the at bat. Sun was looking to jump on fastball there. With the 2-1. That ball is ripped into left field. Schmalzley sizing it up at the track, at the wall, and that ball is off the scoreboard from your, from St. Peter's first baseman, John Sun. He took that 2-1 pitch out towards left field. Schmalzley could do nothing about that as that ball ends up off the scoreboard, putting St. Peter's down 13-2 here in the top of the fifth. Yeah, able to get a hold of that one here. Second time today, the Peacocks have sent a solo shot out to left field, but... Still 13 to 2, so plenty of ways to go for the Peacocks if they want to make this one uh, interesting. Yeah, this that home run should not rattle McVeigh's cage as the Stags have a commanding lead. Let's see if he can just work off what he's built this whole game. First pitch to that bat to the shortstop Lomagino is fouled out of play, putting McVeigh ahead in the count. With the 0-1 to Lomagino. That is grounded to Ferraro over at third. Ferraro gobbles that up, throws it over to Bergevin. Bergevin picks that first. What a nice play by Bergevin. Picking up Ferraro there. And what a way to bounce back after the home run of Son. Yeah, I mean, it's small things, but if he had just missed that scoop, you know, that could start a rally for the Peacocks, especially with the start of their order coming up. So great scoop right there. Get the second out of the inning. And let's try to wrap things up here with only one earned. McVeigh has done a really great job this game working, following hits or home runs. He usually retires his three right after that. First pitch to that bat, the leadoff hitter, and Garrett Grego misses outside for ball one. Grego today, one for two with a single in the third inning. The 1 0 to Grego. That breaking ball misses inside and low for ball two. The 2-0 to the center fielder. That fastball is in there for strike one. With the 
two on. That break ball misses inside for ball three, putting Greco ahead three and one here. McVeigh yet to walk a man in this game today. See if he can keep that streak alive here by attacking Grego. And that ball misses low for ball four, putting the leadoff hitter and Greco on for your for the right fielder number eight. Right Brendan, Wilson. Brendan Wilson. Yep, so he will surrender his first walk right there. Just missed on that fastball. Wilson stepping in now, trying to do some damage here with two outs. Yeah, two outs, man on first and Greg out. The St. Peter's Peacocks have been aggressive. They were aggressive earlier. They tried to throw behind the runner. Let's see if they send the leadoff hitter, Greco, towards second. First pitch to Wilson. Fastball misses low for ball one. The 1 0 to Wilson. That is a breaking ball cut on and missed by Wilson. Great pitch by McVeigh. Like you mentioned earlier, uh, great go with the potential to steal here. He's 10 for 12 on the year, so definitely probably going to give it a look here when you're down by this much. Might as well give it a shot. Not sure if the Stags will be looking for it. And that fastball is cut on and missed by Wilson. Greco, like we said, speedster, but not getting a very big lead over at first. Yeah, might just be playing conservative. Maybe just has the mindset of let's get a bunch of guys on, do the best we can to load them up, and then try to make a big swing. Don't want to get yourself out caught stealing. Might be the mindset there. The one-two. That is caught. Wilson is caught looking for McVeigh's eighth strikeout of the game. The Peacocks score one on account to John Sun, the first baseman solo shot. But don't go anywhere, folks, for your Fairfield Stags will be up to the plate in the bottom of the fifth. Welcome back, folks, to Alumni Diamond here at Cook Field. I'm Colin Lynch alongside Kyle Scannell. In the top of the fifth, St. Peter's Peacocks do score a run in the solo shot off the scoreboard from first baseman John Sun. But your Stags have your three, four, and five hitters up in Bergevin, Hibbard, and Bouchero. Still on the mound for St. Peter's is Mason Williams, the freshman lefty. First pitch to the at-bat is looked at for ball one from Bergevin. Williams tried to start him with a first pitch break ball, but that misses. Second pitch to that bat is in the dirt for ball two. Seems that Williams is going to be the Peacocks pitcher of choice for this uh, rest of this ball game as there's no activity going on in the bullpen. So seems like they're going to ride him out. Third pitch to that bat is cut on and missed by Bergevin. Williams did throw the fastball there high, and Bergevin could not catch up to it. With the two on to Bergevin. That's another high fastball. Bergevin lays off, putting him in a hitter's count here at three and one. Hitter's count here to the three hitter. Bergevin hits that high in the shallow right field. Rack is the second baseman, camps under it, and he'll put that away here for the first out in the bottom of the fifth inning. Rare leadoff out from the Stags. Feels like every inning they've been either getting on with a walk or a, you know, home run extra base hit. So, rare occurrence right there. 
with that with that fly out to the second baseman in shallow right field, that will bring up the DH, Ethan Hibbert, who has done quite the damage today. First pitch that bat is high and outside for ball one. Yeah, like you were just saying, the damage that Ethan Hibbert has done today has been pretty detrimental to these Peacocks. He's come up with big opportunities, and he's clutched up in them so far. So that ball almost hits him. Yeah, that breaking ball was not handled well by Williams. That bounced up and almost, that bounced in front of Hibbert and almost got him. Quick mound visit there with the catcher and umpire with Williams. Switching out balls here. Two zero here to the power hitting DH. End of delivery. Bergeron rips that down the third baseline. That is fair past the diving Baker. Hibbert rounds first and heads towards second as the left fielder has trouble out there. That one winded up on the fence and Hibbert will have a stand up double here with one out, bringing up the right fielder Matt Bouchiera. Knew the Stags offense was going to come here at some time. It took the second batter no time right down the left field line right there. Easy two bags for a great uh, opportunity here to score some more runs. Yeah, Dacey, the left fielder, kind of had a little trouble coming up with that ball and left. But yeah, Hibbert lost the hat in the process. Lost the hat, might have slipped a little bit out there. Hibbert with not a lot of speed easily gets there with the stand-up double. Williams working out a stretch. First pitch that bat is cut on, fouled back by Bouchiero. Bouchiero today, two for three with a double, single, and two RBIs to his name. Hibbard will be pinch ran for by catcher number 41, Eric Ludwig, the junior. Bouchiero rips that towards third, and Baker gloves it on a hop. Throws over to second, but Ludwig gets back safely. What a catch over there at third by Baker. He got up there on that one. Yeah, it's the second really nice play we've seen from Baker today, if we remember that play earlier in the game with that nice stab on the on the ball on the ground there, got the runner in the pickle. So definitely been a defensive uh, superstar for him today. Two nice plays. With that line out to, to third base, that will bring up the second baseman, Zach Sollinger. First pitch is just a bit outside for ball one. Ludwig on second. Zach Sellinger, the second baseman, up to bat here with two outs. Sellinger fouls that one back out of play, putting the count at one and one. Sellinger had an RBI double in his last at bat. Ludwig gets a good lead off second. Sellinger rips that in the 5 5 hole. Ludwig rounds third. He's heading for home. That ball is cut off by Baker at third. Thrown home, but Ludwig gets in there standing. RBI single here with two outs from your second baseman, Zach Sellinger. Yeah, they just cannot hold these stags to a zero. They're going to score again for the fifth inning straight now. Dugout's loving it. And that'll up it to 14-2 to two, Fairfield. Yeah, what a great piece of hitting from your second baseman. He rips that in between third and short. And Ludwig, from second to home, stands up and scores a run. And I'll bring up the catcher in J.P. Kuzik. That ball is low, handled by Vining nicely. Avoided the pass ball, and Selinger easily cruising. Could have easily cruised in the second if that one got by. Second pitch that back to Kuzik. That ball misses outside for ball two. Two zero here to the catching Kuzik. Sellinger over at first. And Kuzik rips, takes a swing and a miss at that fastball, just misses it. Puts the count at two and one. And the pitch. That, hit, that, that pitch misses high for ball three. Putting Kuzik in a hitter's count at three and one. Two outs here with Sellinger on first.
and the pitch. That ball is fouled back from Kuzik. He stays putting the count here full at three and two. And it looks like for your Saint Pe for the St. Peter's Peacocks, they have a new first baseman subbing out John's son, who went yard last inning, in fact, for number 27 and John Wade. I think that's the only defensive change they have made so far. And Selinger's going, but that ball is looked at for ball four from Kuzik, putting two on with two out here for pinch hitting number six, Nick Storino. Yeah, it looks to be a lot of substitutions here, you know, in a game where it's 14-2, to you're going to give some guys some different looks. Also, surprisingly, Mason Williams, that's his first walk he surrendered despite letting up three runs. Hadn't actually walked or struck out a batter before that right there, so first walk of the day. Storino lefty, Williams the lefty. Two outs here with two on. Let's see who will prevail. The pitch from Williams. As a fastball hits the outside part of the play for strike one. Left on left action here for Storino. Trying to cash in an RBI chance here. His first at bat of the game. Oh, one from Williams. Cut on and missed by Storino. That put Williams ahead 0 2 here with two outs. With the 0 2. That ball just misses the outside part of the plate, being the first ball of the at bat. Williams really liked that location, but the umps did not agree with him. Strike zone has not been that wide today. It's pretty, pretty consistently a smaller zone. Williams goes with the breaking ball at one two, but that misses outside, putting the count even here at two and two with two on and two out. Yeah, if you're Williams here, you definitely just attack this batter. You get the left-on-left -left matchup, Schmalzy on deck, you know, make them, uh, you know, make them hit you basically. And that ball will be fouled out of play, having Storino stay alive here, two and two. Can't afford a ball here either. If you throw a ball right here, runners are going to be moving because they have that full count to work with. But right here in the two-two, we'll see if he peppers his own. And the pitch. That ball misses low, putting the count full here at three and two. Like Kyle said, runners will be moving on this pitch, causing a little commotion. Single will most certainly score that runner from second. See what he's got. And the delivery, that ball is outside for ball four, bringing up the left fielder, TJ Schmalzley here with bases loaded and two outs. Last time up, Schmalzley hit into that double play right there that this team really needed. Of course, it was followed up by that moonshot to center field, but Schmalzley definitely looking at this opportunity as a chance to kind of redeem himself and uh, get some RBIs on the board for him. Yeah, Vining goes, up, goes out to talk to the pitcher and Williams after letting up back-to-back -back walks. Before the back-to-back before the -back walks, we had the RBI single from Zach Selinger scoring the pitch-hitting catcher in Eric Ludwig. Vining adjourns the mound and is heading back behind the plate. Let's see what Schmalzley can do here in this at-bat. There is some activity going now in the Peacocks bullpen, so if this does go awry, we'll probably end up seeing a new pitcher. Would be the fifth of the day. Yeah, especially with the leadoff hitter and Dean Farrar coming up next, you might want a new pitcher because Farrar has seen Williams already. And he's shown he can hit him. Yo, oh. Well, first pitch is in there, looking by Schmalzley. That is strike one. Schmalzley 0 for 2 with a hit by pitch today. And the pitch. That is hit out towards right field. Wilson sizes it up and will make the play out in right. Stag strand 3 on the base pass, but tally 1 here in the bottom of the 5th. Don't go anywhere, folks. For your Fairfield Stags are up 14 to 2 and beyond. will be on defense shortly.
Welcome back, folks, to Alumni Diamond here at Cook Park. I am Colin Lynch alongside Kyle Scannell. And for the St. Peter's Peacocks, you'll have your three, four, and five hitters up. Colin McVay is still shoving on the mound for your Fairfield Stags in a 14-2 ball game here on the top of the six. With the first pitch of that bat to Vining. That ball is ripped to right field. And that is over the head of Bougero. Bougero sizes it up on the peels on the warning track, and he makes the play. I thought that ball might have had a chance of clearing the wall, but Bouchero sizes that one up and makes the play. Yeah, Vining, not an easy out. He was going right to it right there, but not enough to get over the head of the right fielder. So quick out number one. Yeah, Vining was first pitch swinging there. He just wants to put the bat on the ball, and that will bring up the DH number 28 in Tyler Smith. First pitch to the at-bat is a fastball seamed in there for strike one. The 0-1 from McVay. And that ball is hit into shallow left center off the bat of Smith. Storino calls, excuse me, Schmalzley calls off Nomera the shortstop and puts that away for out number two. Two quick outs here in the top of the six for the Fairfield Stags. Good communication out there over in left field. You never want to have a collision. You got to make sure it's uh, it's parent who's got that ball and they were able to get that done. So two quick outs right here. This could be the quickest inning of the day if he can retire this batter. Darcy, the Daisy, the left fielder up, takes the first pitch ball in the dirt. Daisy today 0 for 2 with a line out in the second and a strikeout in the fourth. And the pitch. That is a fastball and misses outside for ball two. Two and zero oh here to the left fielder with two outs. Let's see if McVay tags him with the fastball. That he does, but it misses high for ball three. McVay only surrendering one walk on the day. Let's see if he can battle back here in this at bat. Be very surprised if we see a swing here on three and zero oh from Daisy. And the pitch. That is a fastball that gets in the zone for strike one. Three and one's the count here in the top of the sixth. Two outs. And that ball is looped over the second baseman, Selinger's head, and that will drop in front of Bouchero. Three, one swing in by Dacey. He kind of gets jammed a little bit, but fights that over the second baseman, Selinger, and drops in front of the right fielder in Bouchero. First baseman, number 27, John Wade. Making his first at-bat of the day here. It's going to be John Wade stepping in. Just couldn't get the one, two, three inning there with McVeigh, but he's shown he can bounce back, and all that is just a little blooper, blooper over the second baseman's head. So, Let's see if we can bounce back. McVeigh throws over to Daisy, but Daisy gets back. Wade, even though he's subbed in for Sun, is hitting in the spot of second baseman Alex Rackus. Second. First pitch to that bat is fouled out of play into Rafferty Stadium. Yeah, that is a bit interesting with the lineup switch there. Yeah. Not sure how they get away with that one, but it yeah, up, up in the order. Yeah. Daisy with the leadoff first. The pitch is inside for ball one. Baker, the third baseman, is on deck. He's flashed a good amount of leather here today in the field. Let's. At the plate, though, he is 0 for 2 with two strikeouts. That fastball misses high here. It puts the count at 2 and 1. McVay working on the stretch with Dacey on first. He gets the sign and the delivery. That is a fastball that blows by Wade. Wade was swinging, but he could not catch up to the high heat, putting the count he even here at 2-2 two and two with two out, and Dacey, the left fielder, at first base. With this strikeout, McVay would have 10 on the day. Let's see if he can get there. And that ball is grounded to the shortstop. Nomura, Nomura throws it over to Selinger at second, and that will be a 6-4 put out to end the top of the six with no damage done. Don't go anywhere, folks, for your Fairfield Stags will be up to the plate shortly.
Welcome back, folks, here to Alumni Diamond at Cook Park. I'm Colin Lynch alongside Kyle Scannell. Your fair f leading off for your Fairfield Sex is your leadoff hitter in Dean Farrar. Your Fairfield Sex are up 14 to 2 here in the bottom of the sixth. The Stags have 13 hits compared to St. Peter's 5. And there's a new pitcher for St. Peter's, Yash Yang. And the first pitch of that bat is fouled down the third baseline foul. We have a couple of defensive changes for uh, the Peacocks. The center fielder in Grego has moved to second base and Dominic Marabito has taken over in center field. As I'm speaking, Dean Farrar rips that ball down the third, in between third and short and Baker, the third baseman, makes a diving effort but cannot get his glove on that and that'll be a leadoff single for Ferrara. The pitcher Yane here was actually used yesterday. Uh, he only put up two thirds innings though with two earned to his name. So trying to get a better outing here but facing a brutal part of the Stags lineup to do that. With the single from Ferrara, that'll bring up the shortstop, number two, Zach Nomura who look, takes the first pitch for a called strike one. Ferrara also a bit of a speed, speed threat over at first. Namara hits that high in the infield down the first baseline. Seems to be a little confusion, but the second baseman, Grego, gloves it. Grego, used to playing center field, is no stranger to fly balls, and he easily gloves that one. That'll bring up Matt Bergevin to the plate, who has had a pretty uh, relaxing day with two walks, but he does have that double in the second inning with an RBI, but for the most part, they've been kind of working around him. Yane working out of the stretch here with Ferrar on first, and the delivery. That ball misses inside for ball one. Man on first, one out for the three hitter in Bergevin. And the delivery. That is a called strike and Ferrar is thrown back at but gets back safely. Yeah, last time they tried that, the ball ended up skipping by the first baseman and letting another run score, but of course there's only one runner on, so a bit of a safer approach there. The delivery from Yane. That misses low for ball two here to Bergevin, the first baseman. On deck for your Fairfield Stags is Eric Ludwig, who did pinch run for Hibbard the other inning. And the delivery from Yane. And there's a little check swing hit from Bergevin down the first baseline. Wade gloves in, steps on first himself. Looks like Bergevin was kind of protecting himself there with that swing and accidentally makes contact and puts that down the first baseline, bringing up the catcher, the DH, number 41, Eric Ludwig. Yeah, definitely not what Bergman wanted right there with that little check swing. It advances the runner, but two outs right here, and we'll see if the Stags can continue their scoring streak of scoring at least one every inning. Farrar does advance to second on the weak ground ball to first. First pitch is a breaking ball. It hits the outside part of the zone for strike one to Ludwig. Ferraro with a decent lead from second. Pitch from Yane misses outside for ball one. Counts even here, two outs. Ferraro on second with the right fielder and Bouchero on deck. And the pitch. That misses outside for ball two. Feels like a common theme of all these Peacock pitchers, just finding trouble hitting the zone, ending up behind in a lot of these counts and it's been hurting them. Yane gets the sign, collects himself, and the delivery. That ball just misses outside, putting Ludwig in a hitter's count here at three and one. And the delivery from Yane. That ball misses outside and low, and will put Ludwig on first with Ferrara at second for the right fielder, Matt Bucciero. Yeah, three straight misses right there, all the way off the plate. Just couldn't really find his location, and he'll try again here against Bouchiero with two on and two out in the bottom of the sixth. Bouchiero, two for four on the day. 
First pitch is a breaking ball. It hits the outside part of the plate to the righty. Bouchier for strike one. We do have a little action here in the Fairfield Stags bullpen. As a second pitch, the at-bat misses inside and low for ball two. For ball one, excuse me. The 1-1 one -one to Bouchier. Bouchier grounds that foul down the third baseline. Handled nicely by coach Bill Currier. <laughs> Who? Dugout loves that one. Yeah, they're loving it. Great hands over at third by Currier, who loops that to the pitcher and Yang. Yang looking to escape this jam here. One, two, two out. Farrar not being held on at second. Ludwig not held on on first either. Boucher rips that to left field. Dacey going back. He turns and oh. he drops the ball. Farrar will easily score. Ludwig grounds third, he's heading home, and he'll stand up. And Boucher will have a two out, two RBI double. Not sure what happened out there in left field for um, Ryan Dacey. He kind of slipped on himself right there on a play that probably should have been made, but instead will be two more runs for the Stags, pushing it to 16 to two. Yeah, Dacey definitely had a little trouble out there. He's, he was looking over from right shoulder to left shoulder like a football receiver, he definitely had a little trouble sizing that ball up as that did get to the warning track. And that'll bring up the second baseman, Zach Stelinger, and he's Oof. plunked with the first pitch that bat. That one got up near the face. Might have got him on the shoulder, but that'll put two runners on with two outs for number eight, Aiden Baglino. Selinger seems to be okay. He's awarded first base on the hit by fish. That is certainly a unique walk-up song for our new batter right here. Um, yeah, for sure. The chicken whopper, whopper chicken. I don't think I've heard that one before, but he's got two on here, two out. For the pinch hitting catcher, Baglino. And the pitch. First pitch is a breaking ball in the dirt. And Boucher is caught up in a... Bouchero vining through back at Bouchero at second, and that ball went in the dirt into center field, and Bouchero will take third base easily. If that ball was on a rope from vining, Bouchero would have been caught in a pickle and most likely would have ended the inning. Now we have runners on the corners with two outs for Bagalina. The 1 0 from Yane. That ball hits the top of the zone for strike one, even, putting the count even at one and one. That play right there was scored as an error, so it's their fourth error on the day. However, they didn't count that play and left as an error, so. And that ball from Baglino is looped over the second baseman in Greco, and Boucher will easily score, and Selinger will take second base, putting the Stags up 17 to two here in the sixth. What a great piece of hitting by the pitch hitting Baglino. Outside pitch, took it right over the head of Grego at second, and that will advance Selinger to second, having Baglino at first for Nick Storino, who's, who subbed in at center. It's a great example of what happens with one simple error. Can't catch the fly ball in left, and now three runs have scored, and it could be more here. First pitch that bad is fouled back into the netting. Putting Yane, the pitcher ahead, one and oh and one. Yeah, for sure. Errors, errors do kill teams. They would have had if that vining throw was handled. And with that pitch, that is grounded to the shortstop and Lomagino. Lomagino looks to second, but throws the first. And Serino will beat out the throw at first. Lomagino looked like he wanted to go to second, but Bagolino had to break at second base. So Lomagino decides to go to first and that throw is late. The speedy Nick Serino beats that one out, bringing up the nine hitter, number 22, TJ Smallsley. Last time we saw Smallsley at the plate, he also had bases loaded and flew out to right field. So it's he gets another chance right here. He could bring this game to 20 runs if he wants to with a big knock. Yeah, bases loaded here for the nine hitter. That is a breaking ball that hits the inside part of the plate for strike one. The 0-1, which 
Mosley fouls that out of play into Rafferty Stadium. Falls behind quickly 0-2 right here. See if he can protect the plate. Schmalzley looking to do anything to get on base here. That pitch misses high for ball one. Schmalzley, one of the lone stags who has not recorded a hit here today. Might be. I think he's the only one that was in the starting lineup that has not recorded hits. But it just speaks the volumes of how well this offense has been hitting as a unit. They're still batting over 500. They've actually increased. They're at 515, 17 wow. for 33. Yeah, and that pitch misses outside to put the count here at 2-2 two and two. with a 2-2 two -two delivery from Yane. That ball misses outside, putting the count full here, 3-2. Bases loaded, two outs. Runners will be moving. Let's see what Yane goes to here. There's definitely going to be commotion on the base paths. Let's see what happens here. Got to attack the batter here. And that ball misses outside, and that will walk in a run. That will be an RBI for Schmalsley. The second baseman, Selinger, scores, and that will bring up the leadoff hitter in Dean Farrar, who has had himself quite a day. Yeah, he could make this a historic day for himself here if he sends one over the fences. But, yeah, if you're Yane, though, you have to attack uh, Schmalsley. It's your nine-hole hitter, full count. Make him beat you, but missed outside, and now you got to face Dean Ferrara. Ferrara up now with the bases loaded, two outs. First pitch swing, he... He rips that off the netting behind home plate. He wants to jump on a pitch here. He wants his number three of the game, and he wants four more RBIs added to his name. I can tell by that swing there. The 0-1 to Ferrara. Ferrara rips that out of play foul, putting Yane ahead in the pitcher's count here, 0-2. Ferrara 4 for 5 today. This is his sixth at-bat here, and we're here in just the sixth inning. Ferrara's just been a monster at the plate this whole series. But he's down 0-2 here. Let's see if he can fight back from it. And the 0-2. That hits Ooh. Ferrara, and that will bring in a run. Ferrara not too happy because he wants to hit. But that will bring in Baglino and add another run for your Fairfield Stags. That'll make it 19-2 as the... Uh, Pitching coach heads out to the mound to talk things over with Yane after he plunked the batter. This is just an unbelievable inning right here. Five five spot in an inning where it's all over if you catch a fly ball in left field. Yeah, Ferrara actually led off this inning. The Stags have batted around the order here in the bottom of the sixth, bringing yeah. up the shortstop, number two, Zach Nomura. A lot of hit by pitches, a lot of walks today. Yeah, it's just it's just been a nightmare game for the Peacocks. I just uh, the amount of errors we've seen, the amount of hit by the amount of hit batters, walks, just everything going wrong for them. Everything's going right for the Stags. They're taking advantage of these opportunities as best they can. 19 runs on the board right now. Yeah, nine, just ridiculous. Like Kyle said, 19 runs here in the bottom of the sixth. The Stags have yet to go scoreless in a half inning. They've scored three, four in the first, three in the second, two in the third, four in the fourth, one in the fifth, and five here in the sixth. We still have bases loaded with two outs here in the sixth with the number two hitter, shortstop Zach Nomara. First pitch of the at-bat is in the dirt but gloved by the catcher, Vining. If that ball got by Vining, we could have easily had Nick Strino from third waltz into home. With the 1-0. That pitch misses high to Nomura, putting him ahead 2-0. and Yeah, if you're Nomura here, you just wait. You just wait to see if he can find the zone. 2-0 here, just see if he can even hit it, you know? And the pitch. There it that is. That ball hits the outside corner for strike one. Much needed strike from Yane there. You do not want to go down 3-0. and Yane but using 32 pitches here in this half inning. And that breaking ball Ooh. is cut on and missed by Nomura. Nomura really wanted to put the bat, put the barrel to, the, put the barrel to the ball there, and give that ball a ride. We have a two-two count here. Bases loaded, two outs. And the pitch, that is fouled towards St. Peter's dugout by Nomura, staying alive here, two and two. We have Storino on third, send the left fielder in Schmalzley on second, and Dean Farrar, the third baseman, leading off. 
first base. Let's see what Nomura can do here with the 2-2 count. That ball misses low, and I'll put the count full here. Runners will be going here at Cook Field. Two outs, bases loaded, full count. Let's see what Yane goes to here. And Nomura rips that towards center. That ball is sized up by Dominic Marabito, and that is put away for out number three. Nevertheless, the Stags tally five here in the bottom of the six. We're up 19 to two here, and don't go anywhere, folks, because we'll be on defense shortly. Welcome back, folks, to Alumni Diamond here at Cook Field. I'm Colin Lynch alongside Kyle Scannell. And we have a pitching change here for your Fairfield Stags, number 27, Bo Buckley. Kyle, is there anything to know about Bo Buckley? Yeah, uh, Bo Buckley residing from Canada. He's seen not too much action today, just eight innings total in his career. As he's unable to record a first out right there, a ball hits a third base, throw across, gets skipped by him. It'll be a double. Uh, yeah. But yeah, Buckley with a 2.25 ERA, getting some reps right here. Not the greatest of starts, but we'll see if he can bounce back from it. Yeah, Logan Baker, the third baseman there, his first pitch swing, ripped it to Farrar. Farrar had a nice glove over at first, but throws it on a hop to Bergevin at first. Bergevin could not take a hold of it, and Baker will easily stroll into second. Definitely a throwing error from Farrar at third. He could have easily had Baker at first. Yeah, that'll be the Stags' first error of the game. With that error residing Baker at second base, that'll bring up John Sun. Sun did homer his last at bat in the fifth inning off the scoreboard. Second, second pitch to at bat clips the top of the zone for strike one. No outs here with the man of Baker at second with Sun up to the plate. That pitch is looped into shallow left, but Sturin but Schmalzley sizes that up. Great first step in from Schmalzley. He definitely got a great read on that ball coming in fast. Yeah, like you just said, great read. If you're even one or two seconds later on that reaction, you think it's over your head, you think it's hit farther, probably not getting to that one, but he's able to and records the first out of the top half of the seventh. 
Yeah, with that fly out to Schmalzley, that will bring up the shortstop in Joseph Lomagino. First pitch heater clips the inside of the zone for strike one, putting Buckley ahead here. Lomagino 0 for 2 on the day. Baker being held on at second. And that ball is hit in the air down the first baseline. Bergevin will easily take a hold of that one. Great pitch there by Buckley. Made Lomagino pop it up meekly to Bergevin at first. And Bergevin only had to range two steps to get that ball. That'll bring up the top of the order again for the Peacocks. It's going to be Garrett Greco coming in for his fourth at bat. He has lined out, singled, and walked today. Greco moved from center to second base a couple innings ago. First pitch from Buckley misses the zone. That'll be ball one. Man on second here with two outs for the leadoff batter and Greco. And the pitch. Misses high and outside for ball two. Up next for the Peacocks is the center fielder, number two, Dominic Marabito. Usually, Brendan Wilson, the right fielder, would be hitting in, in this spot, but St. Peter's has changed up the lineup quite a bit. Yeah, they've done some, some funky lineup changes here. Not quite sure exactly how they've moved it around, but uh, they've changed things up. A lot of substitutions in this game. Starting lineups looking a lot different now, but... That's what'll happen when it's a 19-2 ball game in the seventh. You know, give give guys some looks. Yeah, for sure. Buckley working from the stretch here. Baker on second. That ball's hit high down the first baseline. Bergman sizing that up. He's in foul territory, and he'll put that away for the third out. Bo Buckley works out of danger with the lead off error, causing Baker to get to second, and that will be game here, folks. Yeah, the mercy rule coming into effect right there. This one is over in the seventh inning, and that means the Stags scored every single inning they got to the plate. Extremely impressive win today, 19-2. to two. Your final sits 17-5 to five on hits. Just a great game. Just a great game for the Stags. Total dominance at for the bats for Fairfield Stags. Every inning, like we said, they did not not score. They didn't not score a run at all in these seven innings, in these innings of play. Pure dominance out the gate, scoring four in the first, and they just kept the momentum going all the way throughout the game. For everyone here at WVOF Sports, thank you for listening in as the Fairfield Stags sweep the Peacocks. We will catch you on our next broadcast. Again, thank you for listening. Have a great rest of your day. We are out.